Okay, so we will start in the thoracic cavity of the rat, which is uh, the top portion here above the diaphragm. So uh, just kind of going through these images, this right here, this flimsy looking uh, muscle right here is the diaphragm itself. Uh, then right here you've got a lung and then this dark red piece is another lung, both surrounding the heart, which is right here. Um, you'll notice that in this rat, you have this gland right here. This is called the thymus, which if you bring it over to the picture on the right, uh, that has been removed so you could better see uh, the top portion of the heart and also the trachea. Um, if you look really closely at the trachea, you can see these little rings. Those are cartilage rings that help keep the trachea open so that air can flow in to the lungs and they don't suffocate. Um, <clears throat> so looking closely at the heart, you notice this is the bottom portion of the heart. The bottom portion are the ventricles. The top portion, you can see it right here, like that red part right there and right there. Those are the atria. So remember that when we're talking about the sides of the heart and the sides of the body on the rat, we're talking about it from the perspective of the rat. So this, even though to us it looks like the left side, this would be considered the right side of the heart and the right lung. And then this would be considered the left side of the heart and the left lung. Okay, so again, we have the diaphragm here, that flimsy looking muscle, the lungs, the heart, ventricles, the heart atria, and then right here you have the trachea and the cartilage rings. Right here you can see the part of the aorta as well, um, which is one part of the heart you will have to identify. Next, we will look at the rat's digestive and excretory systems. So starting in the picture on the left, you can see uh, this little pin, the dissecting pin we have going through it, and right over the dissecting pin, this long, narrow tube, that is the rat's esophagus. So when the rat swallows food, it's going to go down the esophagus here. Um, and this one can be very hard to find. Usually, you have to dig behind the trachea to find it. So that's why normally there'll be a pin uh, through it or just below it to kind of bring it up so you can see it better. So again, this is the esophagus. Um, it's going to disappear again behind the heart and the lungs, so it'll be hard to see this portion. Um, but another place you can easily see it, if you go to this picture on the top right, if you open um, move the lobes of the liver up, you can actually see where the esophagus here is going into the stomach, which is this um, big organ right here. So <clears throat> if you can't find the esophagus beneath the trachea, you can find the esophagus. If you look for your stomach, you'll see it um, going into the top part of the stomach. So where it connects, that's your sphincter. So um, here's the stomach again. The stomach is going to lead then to the intestines. So the intestines are really, really long. You will remove your rat intestines and measure them, um, but when we put them back in the rat, uh, the small intestine is going to be the one connected to the stomach, and then the large intestine, if you come down here uh, to the bottom, you can see the bigger part leading to the rectum. So again, we've got the liver here, um, and if you lift that liver up, you'll be, better be able to see the stomach. You can also see next to the liver here this little red portion. Uh, it's kind of hugging the stomach, and this is the spleen. So not really part of either of those systems, but right near the intestines, and that's also another piece you will need to identify. So going over it again, over here on the left, you've got the top portion of the esophagus. It's going to go down to this picture on the right and lead into the stomach. Here's your stomach. You have to lift up your liver to find it. The stomach's going to then lead into the small intestine, which will snake around for a very, very long time. It's nice and long and lead into the large intestine, which will eventually um, reach the rectum and then come out of the anus so that the rat can go to the bathroom. 
So on this side of the screen, you see the rat's intestines have been taken out. You have the stomach here where the esophagus has been cut off. And then you also have um, the intestines still connected. So remember the first part of the small intestine is called the duodenum. That's where digestion is going to end and um, then absorption is going to begin in the rest of the small intestine. So the small intestine is nice and long so that you have plenty of time, plenty of surface area for um, nutrients to be absorbed into the bloodstream. So a uh, small intestine then is directly connected to the large intestine. The large intestine is going to be a little thicker and often you'll be able to identify it because it'll still have some waste product in it. Once you remove all of these intestines, then it's much better to see the excretory system. So if you look at the picture in the top right corner, now we can see our kidneys. So the rat has two kidneys, or should. Um, they look just like kidney beans, pretty easy to find once you remove those intestines. So here's kidney one, and here's kidney two. In these rats, the veins have been dyed a bright blue so that you can better see them. Um, you can see them coming out of the kidneys especially, so these branches are called the renal veins. Now, remember your kidneys are filtering blood and producing urine as an out product. So um, that's your waste. And that urine is going to travel from the kidney to the bladder. Down here, you see the bladder. It's almost like a balloon-like structure. Uh, usually sticks up and is usually kind of hard uh, to the touch. So there's your bladder. So to get the urine from the kidney to the bladder, you need to try to find the ureter. The ureter can be very difficult to find uh, down here. There's a pin through it, so if you can see this tiny little tube connecting the kidney to the bladder down here, um, that's going to be your ureter. So again, that one will definitely, just like the esophagus, have a pin through it so you can better identify it. Uh, once the urine is stored in the bladder, then it will leave through the urethra, which will be a little different depending on if the rat is male or female. Now we will look at the female rat's reproductive system. So uh, in both of these images, this, these rats are not pregnant females. And you can tell because this long V-shaped organ, uh, which you can see better on this side than you can on uh, the rat's left side, uh, that is called the uterine horn. So a rat's uterus is shaped um, like this in a long V because remember, rats are going to have multiple births. So not just one pup, but multiple. Um, so if we do have a few pregnant rats uh, in class, I'll be sure to show you. But most often, the rats are going to uh, not be pregnant, and they're going to look like this. So this is the uterine horn. A lot of students confuse that for fallopian tubes. Um, because they think of the human reproductive system, but for a rat it is going to be different because for the norm for humans, we are not having eight to 10 <laughs> births at a time, thankfully. So anyways, at the end of the uterine horn, you see this brighter um, kind of circular uh, organ and it's going to be covered in fat. The uterus, um, the uterine horns and the uh, organs at the top here are going to be covered in fat, and that's because this is the ovary. So you want extra fat for cushion, support, protection, um, so that the uh, when a pregnancy does occur, it's going to provide extra protection for those pups. So this is the ovary. You'll have one on each side. In these pictures, it's only shown on the left side, um, but they do have them on each side. So 
the ovary and the uterine horn are the main parts of the female reproductive system that you will have to identify for my class. Here we have two pictures of the rat reproductive system for male rats. So here you see um, one side, the rat's left side has been dissected open so you, that you could see the individual testis. Um, and on the rat's right side, it is still covered. So remember that the testes are in the rat's scrotal sac, um, and that keeps the rat's testes outside the body so that it can maintain a temperature optimal for sperm production. So <clears throat> uh, along with the testis, you will also need to identify the vas deferens, which is the long tube running alongside each testis and then you'll also need to identify the seminal vesicles which you can see very clear up here um, they always look kind of bubbly and they will be hard to the touch and usually there'll be a pin through those to help you identify that that is what is exactly being pointed at so again you've got the scrotal sac the testis the vas deferens and the seminal vesicles